Hello, my name is Jonathan Biznet, and in this video I'm going to talk to you about triax. <clears throat> They're basically a bi-directional switch uh, which is used in an AC type circuit. I've also in this uh, particular circuit used a diac to trigger the triac and I can give you a little closer picture of these here just to kind of give you uh, an understanding of what's here. This item here is the triac. This is the bi-directional switch. This is the diac which will trigger this switch. So the triac goes on at some point when the gate, one of its, uh, one of its uh, pins, gets a voltage level and at that point the switch turns on and allows current to flow, completing a circuit. When the voltage drops back, when the AC voltage drops back through zero or rises through zero, the triac will turn off until it's triggered again. The diac in this case is a bi-directional uh, component and when a certain voltage is reached, in this case the breakover voltage, it will apply voltage to the gate and that will cause the triac to trigger and conduct. So right now even though my uh, isolation transformer uh, and I am using this to kind of separate myself from house ground that's this unit back here even though this is on and uh, running you'll notice the light bulb is not on uh, what I need to do here is to increase, in this case I have a potentiometer, I'm going to, in, uh, well, decrease it until a certain uh, voltage level is attained across this capacitor and that voltage level will be the breakover voltage that will cause the diac to trigger the triac. So let's gradually change this and you'll see it, all of a sudden it comes on and I can scale it back down very slightly to where it's just about out which means that it's being triggered at the very end uh, of each of the 180 degree cycles that make up the full 60 Hertz waveform. The more I change it I can bring it back up here till it gets very very bright. Basically it is on uh, pretty close to 360 degrees. Uh, now not precisely and the scope shows that a little bit and I'm going to show you that in a minute but uh, it uh, it controls uh, this the potentiometer controls the the rate at which that capacitor charges and discharges and therefore the point at which the diac will trigger. So if I take and <clears throat> show you show you the scope here. Let's see if we can get you a good picture of what's going on there. What I'm going to do is try to show you what's actually going to happen as I change that form. So right now you'll see the blue line. This is the 360 degree waveform, 60 Hertz. The yellow is the uh, voltage across the load or the basically the voltage, the point at which the load is uh, seeing something. So you'll see these slight uh, triangles here uh, on the uh, waveform. As I go in and increase or change the potentiometer, you'll see how they move over and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And what you're seeing is the point at which uh, the thing is conducting. So here we're going on at just about mid waveform. Right here the, there is no voltage across the load. All of a sudden there is voltage and currents flowing. Then we hit the zero point, no voltage across the load. We get negative at a certain point, we turn on. So we're actually running uh, approximately 50 percent of the cycle. If I take it up uh, even further you'll notice that that little wedge gets smaller and smaller and smaller and we're on for more of each cycle until ultimately we get all the way up and I'm not sure you can see it but there's just this little teeny tiny bit of a triangle where it's not on. 
uh, where that capacitor has to reach a little bit of a charge in order to get the diac to go on. Uh, if I scale it back again, you'll see that we go back the other way, getting smaller, 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 until eventually the bulb goes out. That's how the triac works. Now I've got a um, I've got a diagram here for you that lays out the circuit I built. Yeah, you'll see I'm plugging into an isolation transformer with a fuse. Uh, I would certainly recommend doing something like this if you intend to put a scope on this or anything like that to look at the uh, what's going on in this circuit. Uh, but you'll see we have a a lamp that's tied in, and this would actually be. Uh, coming off the plug, this would be the white wire going to probably the silver uh, connector on the back of the lamp. And then off of the brass connector, you're going to come over and you're going to connect to the potentiometer, uh, R2, the DIAC, and C1. And that C1, as it charges through R1 and R2, will reach a point where it the voltage level across it is sufficient to trigger the di uh, to cause the diac to trigger the triac. Uh, the other connection off the lamp goes to MT2 of the triac, and then MT1 comes out of the triac and goes back around through the black wire. Fairly simple circuit, but as you'll see, it works very well in dimming a bulb. Uh, not much more I can say about this, but that's one way in which you would use a triac, in this case as a dimmer. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. Um, thanks for watching.